everybody is a hero. Yeah. And I, I would love to ask all of your audience and whoever else, because an awful lot of people say I'm not a hero. Mm -hmm. So my daughter in 2018 seen me leave, leave hospital. Her dad was bald and he's grown back hair. So, you know, her dad is now a, a, her own hero because he has overcame this massive um, challenge. So I've often asked people, how are you, how are you a hero? And people can't answer me. So I always give this simple example. A grandmother brings their child for an ice cream. That child looks up to their granny. And at that moment and time, you are their hero because they have an ice cream. So every single thing you do in your life positively is having a positive impact on somebody's life. Don't ever forget that. And that's for every, every, everybody. And I genuinely mean that. and you're very welcome back to the Empowering Family Health podcast. Today I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted to have a very special man on, a very empowering man who has an exceptional story, um, a story of how he has uh, survived through cancer and we're going to find out all about Paul's journey and what he encountered and really the learnings that he had along the way and he's going to share that with us and it's, it's a really special story so Paul you are very very welcome to the podcast. Joanne thank you very very much it's good to be on uh, I'm very grateful for you for you actually uh, kind of reaching out to me and uh, uh, hearing my story first of all but uh, you know there are some messages here that I believe can can make a big difference to, to people you know. Absolutely and yeah Paul I heard you I'm one of the many networking calls <laughs> that we're all on these days and uh, it just it just really, really inspired me, uh, Paul, the courage and your determination and all those qualities. And look, it wasn't easy either for you. So, Paul, we're going to dive into that whole conversation and um, really help us explore what it was that you experienced through the journey. So, Paul, can you start from the beginning? Tell us, tell us who you are as well and where you're living and, and, and how this whole journey began for you, Paul. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so as introduced, I'm Paul Cocking. I'm from Westport here in County, County Mayo. So for any of your uh, Dublin uh, followers, uh, I'm sure they're kind of laughing at our All-Ireland uh, failures in, 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 in recent years. But um, beyond that, um, I'm from Westport, a very, very proud Mayo, Mayo man. And uh, I'm 42 years old now. And uh, I've got a daughter. I've got a wonderful partner, Linda, and her two daughters. So when it comes to making a decision, it's four girls versus one. So I don't win very often, as you can imagine. Um, so my story starts really in 2018, um, 80 months before that I started training, exercise training for the first time in quite a long time. Um, so it, coming into April of 18, I was the fittest and strongest I'd ever, ever been, both physically and emotionally. Um, so... I was in a good place and I was training four or five days a week. So, you know, um, I was very, very happy. I was interacting with a lot of good, good pe pe people who were having a very positive impact on my life. Um, I wasn't long out of a broken marriage. So, you know, um, this period of time for me was, was just, I was in a great place. But like everybody else, sudden adversities can happen very, very quickly. And... Today, I guess I'm going to talk about my own, but also give some little maybe insights and tools that might help people who face their own little challenges along the way. About three weeks before I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, which is a rare and, and very aggressive type of blood cancer, um, I was in great form. I developed a mouth ulcer and a sore throat, and um, I didn't really think much of it. It started to impact my energy levels, and of course, being training and getting the whole kind of... a uh, the whole drug of, of kind of getting fit and getting stronger and seeing your whole life kind of change in a positive way, it starts to kind of get on top of me a small bit. So I said, look, I'm going to go to a doctor, get some antibiotics or some, something and just see, you know, I, I wanted to, to get this done really, you know. Um, like everybody else, I was in a rush to get fitter and stronger and go to work and spend mm. time with my daughter and play some bad golf and all this type of stuff. Bad golf. Um, and... All of a sudden, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't getting better after a course of antibiotics, so I went back and I had had my bloods done six or seven weeks earlier. 
and my bloods came back fine um, and everything was just great uh, so on the morning of May the 10th I woke up uh, it was uh, coincidentally it happened to be the day after my father's anniversary mass uh, my father died in 2013 of uh, thyroid cancer and wow. so I woke up that morning and I had a black eye and with that I, I immediately became very uh, alarmed and, and I, I, I knew there was something wrong I couldn't swallow a glass of water things had deteriorated significantly very very and quickly this black eye just appeared out of nowhere you didn't bang your eye or anything no no because when I got up I actually said you know um you know I had my girlfriend swung an arm across and kind of lamped me with with uh with an elbow or something or had my daughter uh, you know yeah. just kind of hit me the previous evening playing and messing around um and i couldn't nothing came came to mind and usually when you have a black eye or a mark somewhere you'd always go oh that's where i banged off a chair or table you'd or remember us yeah <laughs> and uh so i immediately you know i uh, i went to my doctor um that morning and uh, i won't tell you exactly what he said to me but the question was on the line of what happened that and immediately there was a real sense of urgency and concern and with that i just went okay this this definitely isn't good so i got a referral letter to go to go away to get my bloods checked uh on site in a hospital and uh, um i guess the roller coaster of events that will forever shape the rest of my life were to begin very very quickly um i as i was passing through my hometown here in westport i went into a pharmacy a very good friend of mine uh, owns farms here in in Westport, and he looked at it and said, "The best 150 euros you'll ever spend will be by going to the Galway a clinic where you'll be seen faster." Uh, and immediately, mm. because I trust this uh, this guy, he, he's a, a great man for advice and a very good friend. So I went to the Galway clinic, and I was seen very very quickly. Uh, I think they noticed my my, my eye, seen the referral letter. And whatever was in that letter, which I never read, um, must have been quite convincing, I guess. I was brought in, I was the blood test done straight away, and they came back into me within 30 minutes and said, We need to take a second sample because your blood sample may have got contaminated or something because the readings are extremely high. Again, me very conscious yeah. sitting up on this chair in a little cubicle uh, in the accident emergency room in the Goa Clinic. And he came back in 45 minutes later and and said, have you somebody with you? And I said, yeah. I was just going to ask you, yeah, were you on your own? No, no, I actually got mum because I was feeling so weak. I actually got my uh, my my mum just to take a spin up. It's about an hour and a quarter away from Westport. And uh, I just said, um, yeah, mum is, is here. So they got mum, brought her in, and they said, yeah, we don't have an ambulance available here. And I was looking going, an ambulance? For who? You know, not realising that was for, for me, obviously. Artist, and yeah. um, uh, it was to bring me over to the University College Hospital and to find that the CLAD award. The CLAD award is a specific le le leukemia award where um, it's, it's, it's strictly for le leukemia patients only. And did you know and that the, at the time, Paul? Not a clue. Not okay. a clue. So um, mum sat in the car, obviously, were very, very upset. And, and I think I was the only one who wasn't crying because. You were I in was, shock. I, I kind of think it was shock, or was I shut down, or was I just. You know, was I just going to face this battle? It was um, happening very fast as well, by the sounds of it. Ma massive, you know. Um, and if I can just go back, actually, just for a second. Um, I learned how to be very resilient when I was a teenager because I had a very bad stammer. And my stammer uh, had ultimately built up my, I guess, my emotional and mental resilience to anything because, you know, guys will innocently will kind of, you know, take the Mickey out of your small bit, and they'll, they'll they'll very much make a mockery of of, of you. I don't think it's anywhere bad. I just think it's to be cool and whatnot. Mm. So I learned an awful lot from that. So I guess at this stage it was just another piece of my life kind of jigsaw that actually went. You know what? You know, let's get through this. I didn't really know what leukemia was. Um, as as na as naive, I knew all about cancer, but I didn't know what leukemia was exactly. Mm. So my mum brings brings me over. We were told to skip accident and emergency. We were told to skip general admissions. And my paperwork had been processed as they were speaking to me. So then I kind of went, okay, uh, okay, now we're getting serious. So we found the CLAD award and I, I buzzed into the CLAD award with my mum and they said to me, uh, okay, um, hi, Paul. And I went, 
I, I, they knew I, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm that famous. And um, <laughs> it was then, I think it kind of set in that, okay, I'm in a lot of trouble. So they brought me into room 18, uh, which, coinc- which coincidentally, as my mom told me afterwards, was the same room that my dad was in was oh admitted not in the same ward but in the same same number room or whatever yeah so she was kind of she kind of took that very very badly whatever um so within 45 minutes i had uh, a lot of tests done and bloods taken I, I, again and my blood readings for for anybody who might be listening to this who's a science scientist because i'm certainly not um your blood reading should be between eight and thirteen thousand to be fit and functioning talking having an interview chatting playing football um, and my readings had gone from 135,000 to 235,000 in about two hours. Oh my so God. Wow. Leukemia boys were having a, a massive party inside me and doing their best to take my life with it, really. That was the, the kind of common consensus from it. Um, These are your white blood cells are, is that you were talking about. Is yes. That? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, your white blood cells. Um, and of course, with that, the red blood cell count goes down and that makes you neutrophenic new, new, and prone to infection and all this type of stuff. No, I, 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 you know, I, I'm not a scientist, so I wouldn't go speaking too much about it. Um, and when I was in there, it was funny, Joanne, when I was in there, you know, people said, would you like to know about what's happening? And I said, no. I said, because I'm going to do what I'm told. And that's mm. all. That's the only thing I can do for, for me. So anybody who faces challenges or adversities, you're you're very much on your own, but it's it's, it's kind of who you let in to help you. And that, is it doctors or nurses? Is it family? Is it friends or not? And, and everyone's circumstance is very, very different. And if I was bringing a message across today, it would be that nobody's situation, whether it's cancer or whether it's kidney failure or whether it's, it's, it's mental health, nobody's um, illness or, or adversity is less than any, anybody else's because we all face an individual challenge that in, in individual challenge will impact you and, and, and your life. So I would never say devalue anybody's adversity. I, I really think that... Um, it's how they're dealing with it in their, their perception of it, where they are in life. And absolutely, yeah, it could be as much as a paper cut. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So the journey followed on um, within an hour. I had my first bone, bone marrow biopsy, which uh, if everybody has a choice, don't have one of one of those. Um, I think I've had 19 in total uh, since 2018. So mm. they always bring you back to, uh, you know, when like somebody says, I have a sore toe or if I ever go, just have a sore hand. It's, it, you know, uh, relatively it's, you don't have a sore hand, mm. but it has ultimately saved my, my, uh, my life, you know? Um, so following that, I had six months in hospital up in Galway. I got out on three occasions for a couple of short breaks. Um, the first 24 hours after I went into hospital, actually, which is not very common, I think, actually, if I'm not mistaken, I was one of the first ever to have um, my first of many chemotherapy sessions done within 24 hours because they need to check all your organ health because it's because of it been a blood cancer. Yeah, because uh, it can it can spread in the blood. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they didn't have chance to do the fully um the fully functioning uh, tests on my body and on my main organs like kidney, liver, spleen, heart. I think they were the four four main ones. And um, so we started in the first nine days. I was in hospital consisted of twenty three sessions of chemo. So yeah. they hit me hard, and um, of course. Uh, the first 24 hours were extremely hard because there was so much going on. There was nurses and they were taking urine samples and blood samples and they were pumping you with uh, fluids to stop the spread of, of leukemia in your body, which was obviously very aggressive when you're looking at 230,000 cells going a bit crazy. Um, mm, mm. And then the following morning, I got asked some very awkward questions and the questions were, didn't really impact me. Um, but they could impact a huge uh, any other person going going through cancer or or leukemia. It was about my my fertility, and they they asked me, you know, uh, would I like to freeze freeze my sperm samples, or would I just go ahead and hope there was a, quite a high chance I become become in, infertile because of the chemotherapy treatment and the aggressiveness of it. Of course, I have a daughter, and I'm very very glad, and I'm, I'm very grateful for being able to be a parent. Um, and, and that was one of the major cogs that got me through it, actually. But I will go on to Sian in, in, in a few minutes. Um, 
But you know, he, like that question was, 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 was asked, I signed the sheet of paper and it was after that that my consultant in Galway said to me, I'm really glad um, you signed that because we don't have any time. And that's what I said, time for what? So a conversation uh, started for just a few moments. There was nurses in and out and doctors and all sorts of stuff going on. And I pushed and pushed and pushed. And I said, what chance have I? There's a lot of panic going on here. What chance have I of surviving cancer? And he kept saying, you're very ill. You're a sick young man. At the time, I was 39. Um, and I said, uh, I said, can we just get an answer here? And of course, he was a Polish man and, and a man I have huge time time for, uh, as, as well as all of his medical staff. Um, you know, like they do an extraordinary job. And this man ultimately saved my, 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 my life. I'll be forever grateful. Um, so I pushed and pushed and pushed. And he said, less than 10%. And I said, all right, OK. That's that's yeah. fine, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Said, did that, did that think... occur to you, Paul, up to this point that there was a question of death? Did that was did that ever enter into your mind prior to, you know, this 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 point where they were talking about freezing your sperm cells and all that? Um, no. Uh, and and an awful lot of people ask me that that question. I've gone into schools and done numerous talks, and people often ask me the same question. And I I think it's just me, and I think it's my personality that there was no. There was never an option for me of having gone in, gone into hospital and accepting defeat over a victory because I did, I'm quite resilient and I'm, I'm very focused and I'm lively and I'm bubbly and, and I'm, I'm always about getting yeah. things, things done, visualizing a future, setting a goal. So, so all of this stuff, um, maybe it was my naivety actually, Joanne, about leukemia and about cancer and it was never going to be me, but of, of, of course, none of us are ever sure about that, as and I am the living proof. Um, no, I, no. Uh, I, uh, I, death, he, death, death at this stage never came into it. Yeah, and, and yeah, because um, when we encounter such a serious illness, you know, there's, there's fear there. Um, there's, a, there's a big element of fear, and we know that fear can stop us in so many different ways. And when there's fear there, we start to think of all the the what ifs and what's going to happen and um, the worst case we start to catastrophize because the brain is preparing you almost. But Paul, you had some um, experiences of fear, but you were able to bounce back. That's what I can hear. There was a lot. Of, you have a lot of resilience. So even though you you experienced fear from time to time, because obviously I can hear you love your daughter so much and your family um, and um, you want to be there for them and you want to be well and healthy. So how did you tell us how you bounced back your strategies? What was going through your mind? And, you know, when you did experience those, those small little elements of fear? Um, for me, really, um, you know, I suppose stepping on from being diagnosed, stepping on from the first month or, or, or two of having cancer, I would have suffered a lot with loneliness. And there was only mm. one day in six months or six and a half months that I didn't have a visitor. Yeah. Um, but during this period of time, I suppose I, I, I did, um, you know, I had fears, I had loneliness. I feared about letting my daughter down. Now my daughter is now 10. So at the time she was only seven. And she'd come up and see me on average, maybe three times a month. And that was because I wasn't able to kind of be active. Yeah. So she used to come up and she used to play some board games and I'd be exhausted after maybe an hour or two hours. And this is what chemo, chemotherapy does. Uh, I guess um, fear for me was the fear that I wouldn't come out of hospital, that it was going on for so long. Mm. It was like I, I would have only got really... Uh, after the, after the initial month, maybe four more sessions of, a, of chemo, but it was so hard hitting that he used to knock you for six. He used to knock you, you know, your, your, your blood cells out and your energy and you became very prone to infection. And this were COVID now, people go around wearing a, wear, 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 wearing a mask. I had that experience two years ago or two, well, or two and a half year, year, years ago now. Mm. Um, so a little bit of fear and lonely, loneliness definitely would have been a major pact of it. I guess I used a lot of visualization and goal setting to step me forward a little bit. And, and I was encouraged to do that by my girlfriend because she was in June, she actually said, what would you like to do in, in a month's time if, you, if, you, if you're able to go to the hospital? 
and I said, look at, I want to look forward to getting, getting home and I want to look at the garden and the beautiful views and with Crow Patrick in the background here um, where I actually live. And so I, I want to see all of those things that I took for granted. And she said, okay, so what else? And I said, I'm 40 on July 11th. And she went, okay, what, uh, what do you want to do for that? I said, I want to cut my birth cake with my daughter. Oh my God. She, she, she went, let's make it happen. So we tried and this particular session of chemo started at the end, middle, middle to late June. And my bloods had kind of gone a bit funny and they were, they were saying, Paul, there's a good chance you won't get out for your 40th birthday, not on the date anyway. Yeah. So we pushed and pushed and pushed and I started to, to do little things to help it along, like start walking around the ward a bit, a bit more, to do little things that were going to show them that I was strong enough. So I did get home. Oh. For my 40th birthday and I did cut my birthday cake with my daughter she was exceptionally proud and it was so good to be home for that few a few days I had some family here and it was just it was just nice to have that little red letter day that I could mark it and it was wasn't just about a birthday it was about that I did get out for a few days yes it was a mad medication to get out of hospital that cost a fortune but it didn't matter because it was a win and I always think that anybody who faces a challenge, all the little wins are so, so important. So every little win is actually a massive step forward. And they accumulate, Paul, don't they? And it, it just oh, builds and strengthens so them. Yeah. I can yeah it, it is almost like you, you, you have this win here, but it's actually came from down below, down in, in the roots, because there, you, know, you have manifested the thought of so much and you've made it happen and you've got home and you ought to have one can of beer that yeah. you're cherishing like, you know, like you've never had a beer before. And all of these things come from a goal. So yeah. I, 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 I had a goal was to actually get home. I had to work very, very hard to get to it. And then I got it. And I was encouraged then on that day by two amazing family uh, people from my family and Anne says, so what is next? I went, huh? I had forgotten that when you reach a goal, when you visualize it, when it happens, Create you've got to have another one. That This has to be a circle. Yeah. You've got to keep on going. And this is when I went back up to hospital, uh, I think it was in July 14th or 15th, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I was very, very upset because I was leaving my daughter again. I was leaving my home. There was more chemotherapy coming. There was more tests. There was an operation to be had. And so I was very, very upset. And, and I struggled mentally and emotionally from that point on for a couple of months because everything in my life had gone back to normal for just two days or three days. And now it was gone again. And, and this is what people who face challenges have. You're ripped apart. You, you were you were ripped from having it here to have been torn apart. They let you have it for two days and it's torn apart. Now oh, they're doing their best for you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not criticizing yeah. them in any way. But um it's kind yeah, of yeah. like what's happening at the moment, even if just bring it up to the current day time where, you know, with this uh, virus going around, we're in lockdown, then we're not, then we're back again. And so it's like you you've been given a little bit and then you're it's like a teaser and then so I can hear that in in what you're saying like you know and Absolutely, and then yeah. you're going you're going back to that you know yeah. loneliness again and operations and everything yeah so we had like i mean when you look at the whole covid situation now um like people are criticizing the government and they're doing this i mean the case numbers are now bananas uh, everything has changed so i just think people need to be just a little bit tighter um, I think we will have the benefit of it. We might just have a summer this summer where we can definitely mix more than we did last summer. Um, mm, mm. You know, and, and this is maybe where uh, people... And I think taken, taken from what you're saying, Paul, is, um, you know, uh, been grateful for every small little thing that we have. And I can hear as well is that when you are appreciative of having that glass of beer or whatever or cutting the cake with your daughter you're present right there in that moment and being present is when that's all there is is now really yeah and um and when you're present in that moment and then that's a milestone so you create that as a memory and you're you know you celebrate all those little things and I think that's what we need to do now as well in this current time absolutely and that, that's what I can hear in your messages look at uh, the, yeah. the 
what we do have the small things that's what i can really hear is the small little things that we've taken for granted before look at i mean i couldn't agree more to be honest with you um i think it comes to a stage where, where we all have an off an awful lot of we, we kind of cruise along this moment i'm ex, i was always very very guilty of it you know, uh, life. I wanted a different car. I wanted a bigger house. I wanted better golf golf clubs. I wanted to use the better, the best golf balls. And all of this stuff really is very, very small. I mean, now people walk an awful lot and they're talking more and they're playing board games and it's all interaction. And I think that's very, very important. And I think that we forget the whole message of each other and time. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody's so busy on their on their on their their phones. I, I'm I'm quite guilty of it. I'm trying to correct myself a small bit. Um, but I think by talking to people and interacting is so, so important. So what I do now after I face my own challenges is, you know, like I would openly come on a podcast with anybody and I'll talk about my own personal experience. That's not a problem because I think that by sharing, by somebody, having somebody who's willing to talk about it, whether it's COVID, whether it's mental health, whether it's about sleep, they're doing their best to make a difference to you. And I just think people have almost forgot that there are other people there. And I and, think and by appreciating them, I just think it's going to enhance everybody. I really do. And that appreciation really raises your vibration as well. And it gets you out of that place of fear because, you know, when you're not sure, when you're uncertain, and that's just a lot of uncertainty now at the moment, we don't know what's going on. And, uh, and, and Paul, this, this whole message that you have, it can apply to whether you have an, in, an illness or a loneliness. You may, you may be healthy and well, but maybe very lonely because you experience yeah. loneliness and, and what's going on now at the moment. Um, and I can hear what you're saying as well about the relationships and communicating and talking to each other and telling people your story. If you have a story of something, you know, um, because we're all human beings and we all have just we're all actually all quite similar and we can hear ourselves yeah. in other people's stories yeah. and, um, and and get hope. I think hope. That's a big message that I can hear from you as well. I think that that's what we can hear and what you have to say. There is hope, even though how dark and devastating your circumstances may appear to be. Um, you know, you have to create your goals. That's what you did. Create your goals, look into the future and you create that with your family as well. Uh, you had something to look forward to. And then when you did achieve them, you, they, you celebrated and you appreciated. You appreciate the fact that you had that. So that's and it's just so powerful, Paul. Yeah. I really do think that that by people sharing their own personal experiences can help somebody somebody else. You might not never know who you're helping, um, but the, you might be instilling a little bit of confidence or courage or acceptance of a particular situation that you may not be fully aware of or you may want to explore or you may want to get out of. Mm-hmm. And I believe that by being kind to yourself, treating yourself a little bit better and being aware of your thoughts yeah. can absolutely make a huge impact on your physical, mental and emotional health. That's, and, and yeah, because that's, that's what you said about the thoughts, thoughts manifested into you creating your goals. And um, so be mindful of how, how you create your thoughts and um, because you are your thoughts, really, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's what you believe and then what you uh, make happen, your behavior and the actions you take and all that kind of thing. Um, Paul, at what point did you get the all clear on your cancer journey? Uh, I left hospital in early November 2018 um, and I was in remission the following May, I think, early, early May is, is when I got the full, um, as the, there's kind of an empty box, it's a little box with it and when it isn't full, it's a good thing. Um, <laughs> so I got that for the first, the fir- first time. I have um bone marrow biopsy done every eight weeks because i avoided a transplant thank- thankfully um I, I was very very uh, very fortunate in, in that way my, my 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 fitness came into it then and my body recovered well um so i had my last bone marrow biopsy last october i believe and um things are looking great all my bloods are perfect i sent my bloods off a few weeks ago and they got looked at and they were perfect and so I'm very, very, very fortunate. I, I won't be cancer. I won't be out of full re- remission for another three years. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm, I'm, my energy levels are not what they used to be, but they're definitely better than say they were six months ago. So uh, I'm on four days a week of work. I'll be, I'll be probably stepping that up again soon. Wow. But um, yeah, again, I think it comes down to um, being very aware of how you feel and and make choices for yourself. 
Perfect. There are any more people out there who will make a choice for you, but it won't be the right one for, for you. So, so be very aware of your own, your own body and your own mind, you know? That is so great. And uh, being kind to yourself, uh, because so many of us do beat ourselves up and we're giving ourselves a hard time. And look, yeah. we're doing the best that we can. And uh, as long as you have that intention, whether you do it right or not, that's not the question. It's your intention um, behind yeah. us. And um, so, Paul, what's next? What's next for Paul? Since you're always been asking that question. <laughs> yeah, so look at, um, uh, I've been doing a lot of work on my on myself for the last uh, year and a year and a half, really. And I've made a decision that I do want to be a speaker. I do want to go into to, to businesses and everything else. And I, I want to bring my message across to people and my own story. By using my own my own story, I think it's very important that that we can that by using my own story, sorry, that that I can bring maybe a perspective change to an awful lot of people who may be beating themselves up a small bit. Yeah. Um, so to find out more about me, really, is you can watch my website, www.paulcocking.ie, and I have a free ebook there um, that maybe tells you more about me and my own challenges and my resilience, um, physical, mental, and emotional. Um, I've just finished an... an uh, an online course which is also on my website right. um, that is very much about sharing tools and insights into my own journey and what may help a cancer patient or their family members um, on their road to recovery hope please please god you know wow. that, that's, so that's where I'm at really but that's that's a lot <laughs> Paul that you're taking on so you've got an online course and you've got an ebook as well is that if you need an ebook yeah or... free book yeah yeah there for anybody to to uh, to to download you know Grand, grand. And they can get that on paulcochlan.ie? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And I'll put that in the show notes as well, Paul, for, so that people can download that. And I encourage people to, to download that as well. And people can reach out to you on Facebook or LinkedIn or? Facebook. Uh, I have a Facebook, my own face, Facebook uh, page, or you can contact me on hello at paulcochlan.ie is my website or is my uh, email. And um, look, I, I'll, I'll contact any, anybody that wants a little chat. But there's no problem. Fantastic. Um, just a quick message from me to you. I just want to, to, to kind of say this to people and, and some people laugh and some people don't. Everybody is a hero. Yeah. And I, I would love to ask all of your audience and whoever else, because an awful lot of people say I'm not a hero. Mm -hmm. So my daughter in 2018 seen me leave, leave hospital. Her dad was bald and he's grown back hair. So, you know, her dad is now a, a, her own hero because he has overcame this massive um, challenge. So I've often asked people, how are, you, how are you a hero? And people can't answer me. So I always give this simple example. A grandmother brings their child for an ice cream. That child looks up to their granny. And at that moment and time, you are their hero because they have an ice cream. So every single thing you do in your life positively is having a positive impact on mm -hmm. somebody's life. Don't ever forget that. And that's for every, every, everybody. And I genuinely mean that. That's beautiful, Paul. And it, it really, it, it means a lot, um, you know, to, to make people feel loved and wanted and cared and nurtured. Just something so small like that, because it's the same feeling, whether it's a big thing or a small thing. It's Absolutely. the same feeling. Yeah. And yeah. you'll always remember how someone made you feel, not what they Absolutely. said. And often, more often than not, Joanne, by you doing something powerful for somebody else, whether it's... Uh, bring it for a spin in a car or walk on the beach it doesn't cost any, any, anything yeah. so this is not about money this is about time and all of your time is free yeah. you have a choice not to make it free but it, it comes part and part and package when you're born you know you're yeah. born naked with loads of time you have a choice what to do with it there is and as human beings we can tend to be impatient but time will reveal so much for us Absolutely. and we have loads of it and yeah, we all so have the same amount oh that's so brilliant Paul, you're actually talking in schools as well, are you? I know schools are shut down at the moment, but you were. Yeah, aware. schools and corporate and businesses. And we have, I have done a number and they've been taken very, very well. Um, so okay. anybody out there, maybe for wellness of events or motivational speaker in, or maybe little uh, nuggets of, of advice that I can offer uh, to, to change your perspective, I'm very open to anybody who would like to contact me. We can we can have a chat about it. Brilliant. I wanted to make sure that was said as well, because that's really important, especially in schools, because, you know, whether you're going through some serious illness and, um, you know, it could be for a family member whose father is like in your case, Paul, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, brilliant. So, Paul, I really want to acknowledge you for the work that you're doing, because 
to have the courage and the commitment and the dedication and to really want to make a difference for people. And again, not just people who it could be if you have an illness, it could be if you're lonely. Um, yeah. But I can really hear um, the message of hope and um, love, really, you know, taking yeah. people out of fear and really living their best lives. So thank you, Paul, for being who you are. And thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Joanne, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for the opportunity. It's been amazing. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks Take care. Have a great day. Thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye.